All right, so I am recording today's lecture Oops. Okay. on neutralization reactions. So these are reactions that take place between acids and bases, right? Last lecture, we talked about pH and the acid base scale and how to calculate pH and pOH and all that good stuff. And today, we're going to talk about neutralization reactions. Now, I'll, I just want to point out <coughs> that we're in introductory chem, right? So we're only looking at strong acids and strong bases neutralizing each other. Okay, the process is gonna be a little different when you talk about a weak acid or a weak base, but we don't, we don't differentiate between strong and weak in this class. This is intro chem, right? So just so you know, if you go on to take general chem sequence, um, when we talk about neutralization between strong versus weak acids, that is different. But here in intro chem, we're not gonna make that distinction. So this is the generic equation for an acid-base reaction. So acid plus base makes water and salt. Now salt is any ionic compound, right? Remember we normally think um, in the non-scientific world, when you see salt, you think, oh, it must be NaCl. But we know as chemists that NaCl is not the only salt, right? Any ionic compound is a salt. So here what we're doing is we're taking the anion from the acid and the cation of the base, and those two are coming together and making my salt, right? And then we're taking the H from the acid and the OH from the base. What is HOH? Well, that's the same thing as H2O. Do we see how this works? So in other words, it's a double displacement reaction. I mean, that's really what it is. That's really what it is, right? The cation of one gets together with the anion of the other. You want to think of it as a double displacement reaction. That's a completely appropriate thing to do. Acid plus base makes water and salt. Now again, make sure your salt, just like we've done all semester, make sure this formula is correct. Crisscross your superscripts to become subscripts, right? If this was plus two, for instance, and this was, I don't know, minus three, right? Make sure you crisscross those when you're writing your formula of the salt. Acid plus base makes water and salt. So when an acid combines the base, the two neutralize each other. Neutralization occurs. So you neutralize acids and bases, making water and salt. Is everybody good on how to do this? Ready to try some. This is what I just said. Make sure you write a chemically correct formula for the salt. All right, so let's do this one together. Sodium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid. Write a balanced reaction for the process. Let's think back to Wednesday, how to write formulas. Sodium hydroxide, do you have to do anything special for writing its formula? Is there anything special about writing the formula for sodium hydroxide? No, right? You've been writing the formula for sodium hydroxide since the very beginning of the semester. Sulfuric acid. Okay, let's think back to last week. I know it's been a three-day weekend. Brains probably haven't been thinking about chemistry as much as I'd like, but that's okay. There's no prefix here, right? It's not hydrosulfuric acid. It's just sulfuric acid. So does that mean that it's made from a polyatomic ion or a monatomic ion? Back in your notes if you don't remember. There's no prefix. So is that a polyatomic or monatomic ion? Polyatomic, great. So what anion is used to make sulfuric acid? What polyatomic ion? Sulfate. Sulfate, right. If sulfate is SO4 minus 2, what would sulfuric acid be? H, what? If it's SO4 minus two, H2, SO4, right. So the base is sodium hydroxide, which we already established. Our acid is sulfuric acid, that's H2, SO4, right? No prefix tells me that's a polyatomic ion. The polyatomic ion is sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 minus two. That means I need two hydrogens to make this neutral. 
So when we write this um, double displacement reaction, because you can think of it that way, our products are going to be what? Water and what's the name of our other salt? This and this are giving me my water. So what's the formula going to be when Na plus and SO4 minus 2 get together? Na Na2, SO4, right, because this is plus 1, this is minus 2, so I have to crisscross those. So our formula will be Na2, SO4. And then we need to balance it. In terms of our subscripts, in terms of our subscripts, H2SO4 is AQ, NaOH is AQ, H2O is L, it's a liquid, and Na2SO4 is AQ. All of them are AQ except water. H2O is a liquid. Does everyone see how we did this? Acid plus base makes water and salt. Any questions on how we do this? So you could think of it as a double displacement reaction, right? Because that's an easy way to keep it straight. Or you can just remember, okay, I'm making water, and then I just need to figure out what my salt is from the cation and the anion of the acid and the base. Okay, make sure that you have the formula of the salt correct, right? That crisscrossing, and then also double check that you're balanced. All right, you try this one. Barium hydroxide and hydrofluoric acid. Barium hydroxide and hydrofluoric acid. I'm gonna pause the video while you give this one a try. Let's go over this one. So barium hydroxide is our base. And hydrofluoric acid, what's that formula? HF, just HF, right. So when we Combine these two, we produce water and a salt, right? So we get water and BAF2. Why is it F2 and not BAF? Well, because barium has what charge as an ion? Ba plus two and fluoride is minus one. So we crisscross those, that's why there's a two right here. Don't forget this two is outside a set of parentheses. Most common mistake I see with hydroxides is students omit those parentheses, right? Even at the end of the semester, like where we are, we're in what, 13? I still see students omitting parentheses around hydroxide. So make sure you include that set of parentheses. Did you get it right? Made a mistake, do you see where you made it? All right, do this one. Sodium hydroxide and nitric acid. Sodium hydroxide and nitric acid. I'll pause the video. All right, let's look at this one. I don't have the answer on here, so let's go through it on the board. So, sodium hydroxide has what formula? NaOH. NaOH, right, that's our base. Does it matter if you wrote the base first or the acid first? No, it doesn't. Right, subscript AQ, this is the solution. And our acid is nitric acid. What's that? HNO3. HNO3. All right. So what are we going to get? Well, this and this are what's making my water, right? H2O, liquid. And my salt is coming from what? The cation here and the anion here. So my cation is Na plus, and my anion is NO3 minus. So what is the formula for my salt? It's just Na, NO3. And what phase is this? This is, would you be able to see this? Would you be able to see a solid? Is it a precipitate? No, it's not. It's just AQ. Do we need to do anything to balance this? No, it's already balanced, works out for us, right? So our final answer, let's clean it up a little bit. HNO3 plus 
NaOH produces water and sodium nitrate. Already balanced. Yay, worked out for me. Any questions on this one? All right. I think I've got one more. Yes, acetic acid and lithium hydroxide. Acetic acid and lithium hydroxide. So we're looking at acetic acid. What is acetate? Who remembers what the acetate ion is? C2H3O2 with what charge? Minus, right, so acetic acid would be H, C2H3O2. Lithium hydroxide, what's its formula? LiOH, okay. So we'll get lithium acetate and water. Do we agree? Any questions? Now acetic acid is a weak acid. Um, like I said, we're dealing in terms of calculations, really dealing with strong acids and strong bases in introchem. So just so you know. All right, so let's talk about titrations. A titration is a method that we use to figure out the concentration of an acid or base of unknown concentration. So if we don't know the concentration of the acid or if we don't know the concentration of the base, we can titrate to work backwards and figure out what the concentration of that unknown is. So this is based on stoichiometry. Now you don't need to write this in your notes. Okay? I just put it in there primarily because this recording is going online. And so if somebody's watching this recording who's in general chem, I want them to understand that what we do in gen chem is a little bit beyond what we're doing in intro chem. Okay? So this really doesn't apply to you in terms of your notes, what you need to write down. I just put that in there because I know this video is gonna be posted online. And if you're a gen chem student watching this, you're gonna look at weak acids as well as strong acids. But in chem, we just deal with strong acids, strong bases. Because the calculation is gonna be slightly different for a strong acid versus a weak acid. So for you guys, as in chem students, we're only gonna look at strong and weak, uh, strong acids, strong bases, not weak. All right. So what's going on during a titration? So we take an acid, let's say, of known concentration, and we add it to a base of unknown concentration. And then we know the molarity, right, because this is known concentration. So we know the molarity here, right? And we know the volume that we use, right? So we can measure that with my Bunsen burner, or Bunsen burner, burette. You're not gonna measure much volume with Bunsen burner. Measure your volume with a burette. Right? You know the volume, you know the molarity. That can give us number of moles. And then if we can get number of moles, we can do a little bit of stoichiometry to get number of moles of our base, right? And then if we know the volume of that base, then we can say molarity over volume, and molarity equals moles over volume. Make sense? Now you can go the other direction too. If I replace the word a base of known concentration, I could titrate a unknown acid, right? So you can go either direction. You can use an acid to titrate a base, you can use a base to titrate an acid. Okay, it's not always acid added to base for unknown identification. It could also be the other way around. And so what you're going to do in lab, when you do your titration, your experiment will be very similar. You're going to have an acid, right? You're going to have an acid solution here. And that's, that, that's something we don't know its molarity, right? It's unknown. I'll know it. You won't. Right, so I'll put my acid in and I'll know its volume. Right. And I've got a base. This is known concentration. Right, so I know this concentration. A burette's a very accurate piece of glassware. So I figure out how much base I add. Right? And then how do I know when I've neutralized all the acid? Because I'm going to have an indicator in here, a pH indicator. A pH indicator you're going to use is phenol phthalene. So this is a nice, bright way to tell who's having a good day in the lab and who's having a bad day in the lab. Because your final solution here, I'm using phenolphthalein, should be everybody, unless you've got painted fingernails, look at the color of the pink on your fingernails. Okay, just pale, 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 pale pink, all right? The whole solution 
should be that pale pink all the way throughout. And it should be stable. So in other words, if it fades, you're not there yet. Um, so I can see, and everybody else can see, did you titrate it well or not? If you add too much, it'll turn bright pink, fuchsia. You know, it'll be in your face pink. It's going to be a bold pink. So uh, everybody can see. <laughs> How well are you doing in the lab today? So that's a fun experiment to do. Um, experimental technique is, you know, kind of advertised to the whole class. So that's kind of fun. Um, but it's also fun because you get to make a pretty solution, right? The, the final solutions that, like, I use fingernail pink. It's a good kind of reference color there, right? If yours looks like this, that's a bad day in the lab. Right? You've over titrated. So when you're getting close to the end point, you'll add a drop and it'll kind of swirl around and then fade. You're not there yet. The whole solution has to be stable at that fingernail pink color. Just a preview of things to come. Okay, so here are the steps in titration. Here's the steps in titration. I'm actually gonna go through, I wanna make these appear separately so that I can talk about them as we do it. Okay, so the first thing in titration, we know the molarity of the known, right? Let's pretend it's 1.5 molar, right? We know the molarity and we know its volume. Now, why does the volume have to be in liters? You're gonna measure it in milliliters, right? But why does that volume have to be converted to liters? Because molarity has what units? Molarity is what over what? What is molarity? What's the formula for molarity? Who remembers from that? Right, molarity is equal to moles over liters, right? So if we know the molarity, let's just pretend it's 1.5 molar. And we know the volume, let's pretend we used 25 mils. What would that be in liters? Right, just move the decimal three to the left, right? 0 0.025, don't forget those two sig figs. Right? So how do you get X by itself? X would just be molarity, so 1.5 moles per liter times 0 0.02500 liters. Right? Liters cancel, so that gives you an answer in moles. So step one, that's why step one is molarity times volume in liters. Okay? And this gives us number of moles of acid. Make sense? Everyone see how we're able to do this. Molarity times volume gives us number of moles. Now if you know number of moles and you have a balanced equation, you can then do a mole ratio step, right? So if you know number of moles and you know a balanced equation, you can then do a mole ratio step. I'm actually gonna leave that just like that. So you're gonna multiply by the mole ratio from the balanced equation, right? Those coefficients, those coefficients. So let's just pretend, I'm gonna make up some numbers here. Let's pretend that you've got two uh, of one and three of another produces you know, H2O and salt. Because we don't care about the coefficients here. Let's just pretend this is my acid and this is my base. And let's pretend in step one, we found out that the number of moles acid was, let's just pretend, 0 0.073 moles. How would I set up that conversion factor? I want acid to go away, right? So is acid going to be on the bottom or on the top? I'm trying to figure out information about the base. Does acid go on top or on bottom? Bottom, right? And the mole ratio, here's two, I'm just making this up. So two moles acid, and then what will be on top? Base, and what number would be with it? Three, 
Right, so these coefficients are where these are coming from. Just like stoichiometry that we did a couple weeks ago. Right? And now the acid cancels out and I'm left with moles of base. Okay, does that make sense? Now we get number of moles of base from stoichiometry. We're not going to be interested in the coefficients of the water or the salt. But of course, you do need to balance the equation, which might involve putting a coefficient over here. Right? But you're never going to be having a question mark over water. You're never going to be having a question mark over the salt. Okay, you're only interested in either finding out the molarity of the acid or the base. Is everybody good on how we do step two? Mole ratio, just like regular stoichiometry. And then now we know number of moles of base. We just calculated it. And we know the volume, right? So now molarity is just moles over liters. So if we just calculate molarity by taking the moles that we just solved for, right? So this number right here is right there. And then this is from the problem. So you don't have to deal with molar mass, you don't have to deal with grams, any of that stuff. Woohoo! Because everything is already in moles. So if you find yourself calculating a molar mass, stop. Okay? You don't need to calculate molar mass when you're doing a titration. It is completely not needed. So it's three steps. Three steps, they're relatively easy steps in my opinion. The most difficult part is remembering to convert volume to liters. That's the number one mistake students make. They forget to convert milliliters to liters. And they'll either do it by moving the decimal the wrong direction, or they'll just forget to do it altogether. <clears throat> Does everybody see how we do this? Anyone need me to leave it here longer? All right, so let's... Let's go through an example. And just remember, you can use this to calculate concentration of an acid or of a base. Right? Either one. Either one. You can use an acid to solve for a base. You can use a base to solve for an acid. You can go either direction. So let's go through this one together. <clears throat> In a titration, 23 milliliters of calcium hydroxide. Boy, that's a bad choice because calcium hydroxide is insoluble. So, so let's pretend calcium hydroxide is soluble. Calcium hydroxide is insoluble, but we're going to pretend it is. 23 milliliters of calcium hydroxide of unknown concentration is titrated with 50 milliliters of 0.115 molar hydrochloric acid. What is the concentration? Oh, it says sodium hydroxide down here. Which one did I use? Oh, I definitely used calcium in the problem, didn't I? Yep. Calcium. Gotta be consistent. We're pretending calcium hydroxide is soluble. It's not. It's pretty insoluble. But let's pretend that it is. Assuming the calcium hydroxide dissolves, what's its concentration? Oh, that's right, barium hydroxide soluble. So we can replace that calcium with barium because barium hydroxide is soluble. Now we do have something that actually dissolves. Calcium hydroxide is insoluble. Barium hydroxide, it'll dissolve. So just replace the first couple letters of your problem. So instead of CA, we'll use BA. CaOH2 is insoluble. B 
BaOH2 soluble. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing we need to do is we need to write a balanced equation. And here's what I do. I list what I know and what I'm looking for, just like I did in stoichiometry uh, back a few weeks ago, right? I first have to do my double displacement reaction, though. HCl is hydrochloric acid, barium hydroxides, BaOH2, producing water and barium chloride. The problem tells me that it's 50 milliliters of 0.115 molar HCl, and it's 23 milliliters of the barium hydroxide solution, and I want to know its molarity. Okay? So list what you know and what you're looking for. Of course, step one's got to be write the balanced equation, which we just learned how to do a few minutes ago. Double displacement. So list what you know so that you don't plug in the wrong number for the wrong substance, okay? That helps you keep stay, everything stay organized. Now, what's step one gonna be? Molarity times volume, right, of what? Of the known, right? Now, do I use this as milliliters? No, what do I do? Convert it to liters, so what would that be in liters? Right, 0 0.0500, zero zero. I move the decimal three to the left. One, two, three, point zero 0.05. And then don't forget those two sig figs, zero, zero. Right, so you're gonna multiply the molarity times the volume of the known. Molarity times the volume. Notice liters cancels. That's what gives me moles. Oh, we forgot to change that. C A to B A. B. Oops. B. Molarity times volume gives us number of moles. Because there's nothing I could do over here, right? This, I've got an unknown. So I can't do anything over here. So the only logical choice to pick would be the molarity and the volume of the acid. Is everybody good on step one? You take the two pieces of information you have and multiply them, right? Because molarity is moles over liters, Therefore, moles is molarity times liters. Everybody good on step one? Now, step two is going to be my stoichiometry step. All right, let's replace the Bs real quick so that we have the Bs in the right place. All right, we've got moles of acid from the previous problem, and we want acid to go away. Right, because I'm trying to get moles of base. So the mole ratio here is two to one. Yes? Two moles of acid are used every time I consume one mole of base. So I set it up so that the mole that I want to go away is on the bottom and the unit I want to keep is on the top. Multiplying straight across and divide up. Right, moles of HCl cancel and I'm left with moles of barium hydroxide. Does everybody understand how we did this step? Step two is mole ratio, which is just exactly the same as mole ratio from all the other stoichiometry we did a couple weeks ago. This does not differ in any way. <clears throat> we good on step two? And now we know moles and we know volume. So do we have everything we need for molarity? Yep, we sure do. So now molarity is just moles over liters. All right, so it's just moles over liters. Now don't forget, can I use 23 as my volume? Can I use 23 as the volume here? No, what is it 
going to be. Move the decimal three to the left, one, two, three becomes point zero two three zero. Right? So two point eight eight moles, or two point eight eight times ten to the negative third moles, which I just got in the previous step, divided by the volume in liters, keeping three significant figures. My molarity is point one two five, and I need units. Right, that unit is concentration in molarity, so I need to write capital M. Make sense? Any questions on this process? You ready to try one for yourself? You want need me to leave it here longer? All right, you do this one. In a titration, 135.5 milliliters of nitric acid solution of unknown concentration is titrated with 71.42 milliliters of a 0.565 molar potassium hydroxide solution. What is the concentration of the nitric acid solution? Let me pause the recording and I'll give you some time to work on this. All right, let's go over this one then. So here, we're using the base to figure out the concentration of the acid, right? We're going from base as our known to acid as our unknown. So first we have to write a balanced equation, right? We can't do anything until we have a balanced equation. Lucky for us, when we write this, it's already balanced, right? Mole ratios are one to one to one to one, so no coefficients needed. Problem tells us that we're interested in the molarity of the acid, right? So that's where the question mark here comes from. And the volume of the acid was 135.5, the volume of the base was 71.42, and the molarity is 0.565. Can we leave these volumes in milliliters though? No, we cannot. We have to convert them to liters, dividing by a thousand. Right, so the first thing we do is we're gonna calculate the number of moles of the known, right? So how do I get that? If molarity is moles over liters, then moles is molarity times liters, right? Molarity times volume. So molarity and volume, Right, 71.42 milliliters is 0 0.07142 liters. Liters cancels, that gives me an answer in moles. Do we agree on step one? Now we wanna carry out extra digits. I didn't carry out too many here because I was running out of space on my slide. But if you carried out more decimal places than that, that's fine, right? Because we're gonna be rounding at the very end. So I was running out of space on my slide here, but you can carry out more decimal places than that. Do we agree on step one? Everybody got the same answer within rounding? All right, step two, we're multiplying by the mole ratio. Now the mole ratio here is one to one. So if my number doesn't change. What changes? My units. Do I still have to show this step even though the number doesn't change? Yes. Why? Remember, the whole point of a test or a quiz is to communicate to me that you know what you're doing. So if you show me this step, that tells me that you understand how to do the conversion from moles of KOH to moles of HNO3. Okay. So even though the number isn't changing, yes, it's extra writing to show a step where it doesn't change the number, but it is important to tell me that you understand how to turn this unit into this unit. That's important. Just remember, my goal here is to convince Dr. Brock that I know what I'm doing. All right? If I show this step, that'll make her happy. That'll make her convinced that I know what I'm doing. So always, 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 even if the number doesn't change, but the units do, show me how you do that. Everybody good on step two? And then lastly, we know number of moles. We just got number of moles. We have the volume from the problem. So now it's just molarity, moles over liters. And we're rounding our final answer to three significant figures. This number's got four sig figs, four sig figs, but this one's only got three, right? So that's why my final answer can only have three. And I do need units, right? Capital M as my units. You could put the HNO3 if you want, but you absolutely have to have this capital M, right? This 
molarity isn't here, then I'm going to mark it wrong. If you put whether or not it's agent or gray, that doesn't really matter. But I need to know for sure that you know that unit molarity. Did you get it right? If you didn't get it right, do you see where you went wrong? Questions on this problem? Can I try another? Okay, do this one. 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide is titrated with 33.8 milliliters of 5.5 molar sulfuric acid solution. I'm not sure why I gave you that formula. Must have been feeling nice. What's the molarity of the base? I'll pause the recording so you can try this one. All right, let's see what we got for this one. So first we need a balanced equation. Right. We need a balanced equation here. Sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide producing water and sodium sulfate. So step one is balanced equation. Well, I guess you could think of that step zero, right? Because you can't do any stoichiometry until you have a balanced equation. Listing what you know and what you're looking for from the problem. So step one is molarity times volume. Which am I going to use, the acid or the base? Do I have enough information about the base to do molarity times volume? No. So by process of elimination, right, you can say, okay, this one's got to be what I work from. So here we're using the acid to figure out information about the base. So molarity times volume, right? Moles per liter times liters, right? Liters cancel, that gives me moles. You could have carried out more decimal places than that if you wanted. That's fine. We're going to round at the very end. Okay, so you need to carry out at least three, because that's our least number of sig figs. So carry out at least three. It's ideal if you carry out one or two more, but if you carry out at least three, you're okay. We good on step one? Now we're gonna multiply by the mole ratio. Right? Mole ratio here is two to one. Two moles of NaOH are used for every one mole of sulfuric acid. So we take the number we just got, multiply by two, divide by one. Moles of H2SO4 cancel, that gives us moles of sodium hydroxide. Do we agree on this one? Now we know moles and we know volume. Do we have everything we need to calculate molarity? Yeah, we do. Molarity is moles over liters, right? So moles over liters, the answer we just got. Don't forget to convert milliliters to liters, right? When we divide by 1,000, that gives us 0 0.025. Zero. How come this zero stays? This was a sig fig here, so it stays. 14.8 right? molar is what I got. It's concentrated. Do we agree? Questions on this one? All right, do another one. If 41.1 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution are needed to neutralize 20 milliliters of 0.15 molar sulfuric acid solution. Well, hey, that's convenient because that's the same two acid and base from the previous reaction. So you don't have to rewrite the problem. What is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide? Pause. Let's look at this one. So, we're having the same reaction as the previous one, sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, so we don't need to rewrite the problem in terms of the equation, because right, that's already the same um, acid and base from the previous problem. We just have a different proportion this time. Right? Sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. Just different molarity, different volume. Yes. And we're solving for the molarity of the base. So first we're gonna calculate number of moles of the acid. Molarity times volume. Well, that's a bad rounding on my part, right? Because I only carried out one decimal place here, one sig fig. That's not the greatest thing, but it's 0.02 times 0.15. So, not going to get a whole lot of sig figs there either. We agree on step one? Now we're multiplying by the mole ratio, which is 2 to 1. Do we agree here? 0 0.006 moles. And now we know moles and we know volume, so we can calculate molarity. Questions on this one? 
questions, questions? All right, so a couple of announcements. I'm gonna stop the recording for that.